Well, hello. What we're going to talk about today is what happens if the keto plan that you're on, it stops working. Okay, now I created quite a few other videos um, on this topic under plateauing or stubborn metabolism. So I wanted to create a video that goes a little beyond what I've already talked about. Okay, and in the other videos, I talked about making sure you have the correct program. Really learn about it before you jump into it because you might be doing it incorrectly. Uh, always do keto within a minute fasting. That's another really important tip. Make sure you're sleeping. Make sure your stress is low. Make sure that you're, if you have another health problem, whether it's thyroid or you're constipated, you have inflammatory condition, handle that. If you're on medication, you know, find some alternative with the help of your doctor. Uh, and then the other thing is just, you know, when you're not losing weight, for example, it could be you're gaining muscle. So that could be throwing you off. Uh, and even size could be not changing because as muscle gets a little bigger, especially if you're exercising, you may not see a shrinkage right off the bat consistently every week. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is having the estimation or the correct idea of what it's going to take for an individual because some people have a real tough time, other people don't. Like your spouse could probably lose weight really fast. A family member uh, does the exact same diet you're doing, they lose, you don't. Okay, so it's very frustrating. So what I want to tell you is that uh, unfortunately it's difficult to determine what's going on inside of a body, especially testing insulin resistance and other types of cellular dysfunctions because uh, it's very expensive to test that and you'd have to do a whole series of tests and even then a lot of times it won't show up. So the point is that if you had chronic insulin resistance your entire life, okay, it's going to be tough. So for example, if you have a chronic insulin resistance problem your entire life or 10 or 15 or 30 years, you're up against a huge severe problem that is going to take a lot of effort to get through that. It's not going to be easy. So if you're doing all the usual things and you're not seeing it come off easily, just realize you're, you may be up against a bigger problem that is inside your body. So you're going to have to raise the level of effort to match the problem. That being said, let's go into a couple things that you can look at just to take it to the next level. Uh, number one, your carbs. So I've been recommending 20 to 50 grams of carbohydrates each day, okay? Not per meal, each day. So of course, the slower the metabolism, the lower the carb. So what I'm going to recommend, maybe you need to go down to 10 grams or less of carbs. And then the other thing that I'm going to talk about is vegetables. So I've been recommending a lot of vegetables between seven to 10 cups and not to factor those carbs into your total carbs between 20 and 50 grams. So some people may need to factor those in. So, but check this out. If you're doing romaine lettuce, it only has like 1.5 gram of carb per cup. So if we deduct the fiber, which is a gram per cup, that gives us 0.5 grams, a half of a gram per cup, which is so small. So we're talking, if you consume 10 cups, it's only five grams of carbs, but it is something, okay? Let's take spinach, for example. It's 1.1 gram of carb per cup. With a fiber of 0.7, that gives us a, a net four grams of carb for 10 cups of spinach, okay? So again, very insignificant, but it's something. But check this out, blueberries, 21 grams of carbs, minus the fiber, which is 3.6 grams, gives us a net carb of 17.4 grams. Again, that's a lot higher for one cup than vegetables. So if we go to blackberries, for example, 14 grams of carbs minus the fiber, which is eight grams, gives us only six grams of carbs. Okay, for that's, that's for one cup. So if we compare six grams of carbs to 17.4 grams, you need to do blackberries, okay? Now let's take mixed nuts. 29 grams of carbs, if we minus nine grams for the fiber, that gives us still 19 grams of carbs for one cup of mixed nuts. So you may need to be the person, unfortunately, that needs to count in the vegetables into your total carbs and really shift the types of foods that you're consuming, maybe to blackberries, not blueberries, to really keep those, those carbs way down there, okay? Next thing we're gonna talk about is intermittent fasting. Some of the liquids that you consume when you're in the fasting period. 
If you're doing tea or coffee, lots of coffee, which I don't recommend, or tea, and you're adding half and half or cream, that could be the thing that keeps you out of full fat burning mode. Um, recently, I had someone just cut out the cream and the half and half, and the blood sugars came right down from like 160 to 120. And you may also need to cut out the Bulletproof coffee, the MCT oil or the fat or the coconut oil that's put into and blended into the, the coffee. Okay, that's another factor. The next thing we're talking about is actual, the amount of fat that you consume. I mean, the goal is to have your body run on your own fat, right? Not as much the dietary fat. So if you consume fat, you will burn the dietary fat and it will come down out as ketones. So you'll be positive for ketones, but those ketones are coming from the diet, not your own fat in some cases. So you may need to cut down the amount of fats to the point where your body now burns your own fat. Again, another point to look at, and I'm going to cover everything. Okay, so then the next point is if you're cutting down the fats and you're cutting down the carbs, we don't want you to be, go into a situation where you have nutritional deficiencies. So you definitely need to enhance the diet with electrolytes like more potassium, the B vitamins as in nutritional yeast, and definitely the trace minerals as sea kelp, and the fat soluble vitamins. Cod liver oil, that will give you a good amount of vitamin A and vitamin D, and even a small amount of organ meats like liverwurst, because that, that way you'll get pretty much all of the fat soluble vitamins in a very small amount. Just make sure it's grass fed. Now, the next thing we're talking about is the type of carbs, because if you're doing even 10 or 20 grams of carbs per day, and the quality of carb is juice or bread, not vegetable or some other thing, then that could be a big problem because even though your carbs at a certain amount, that refineness of that food or the refined carbohydrate will uh, greatly spike the blood sugars because you're dealing with not just the carbs, you're dealing with the, what the carbs do to your blood sugars. Okay, So you have celery or vegetables versus juice or an apple. Definitely a big difference. So that's another point. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is alcohol. You know, some people will say, well, you know, I'm doing zero carb alcohol. My, my alcohol has no carbohydrates. So here's the thing. What it does for destruction of the liver cells, raising the liver enzymes, knocking you out of ketosis, despite not being a carb, it's a solvent. It's a chemical, and it can definitely create some serious problems with your liver and set you back. So recently I found this little uh, article online of this guy that wasn't getting into ketosis that well and he was at, reaching out to see if someone can tell him uh, or advise him on why it's not working. Okay, so I saw what he ate. Okay, it wasn't too bad. Okay, then at the bottom he had this one line and he stated, um, you know, he's been alcohol free for five days but before that, like 10 days of drinking solid before that and then five days of not drinking and he's wondering why it's not working, okay? Not connecting the dots too well, but, and even on the days he was drinking, it was up to 12 plus glasses of alcohol every single day. Now, think about what your body has to do to make a ketone. The fat has to be burned, and it's burned, and it's converted to a ketone through your liver. If you're damaging the liver for 10 days in a row, it could take you up to a month or more to heal if you drink for 10 days straight. So just realize that alcohol is not friendly for keto, okay? The other thing that's really bad is the, is the fructose. Agave nectar, it's just it's like 98% fructose. There's fructose in fruit. So fructose, even though it doesn't increase the blood sugar, it creates some major insulin resistance and a fatty liver, okay? Then, which will decrease your capacity to make ketones. And the last thing I wanna talk about is intermittent fasting. So if you have a certain time of the day that you eat, let's say it's one o'clock and then five o'clock, and it's very consistent, okay, your body gets used to it, uh, you may want to switch up those times that you eat. In other words, vary the times. Like in the caveman days, they did not eat that consistently as far as the time. So if we mimic that time period uh, and you vary the times of eating, I think that will actually greatly help you. So never eat at the same time. Push it an hour forward or an hour back so you always vary it. 
Okay, so that should give you a lot to think about. So I just mainly wanted to create this video for you to kind of spot an area that maybe you need to focus on to tweak it and get better results. Thanks for watching. Hey, you know what? I just wanted to say thank you for watching these videos. You made it this far. I appreciate your attention and your precious time.